Welcome to this tutorial presented by oraclecoach.com. This is Claire Rajan and in this tutorial I'll introduce you to PL SQL programming. PL SQL is the programming language extension to SQL. It allows you to write programs in Oracle. In this tutorial I'll give you an idea about what a program is and what the structure of a typical PL SQL program would look like. We begin by defining some of the most basic things about PL SQL. It is a programming language that allows you to write high-level computer instructions to accomplish a given task. PL SQL stands for Programming Language Extension to SQL. It is an Oracle proprietary language and can be found in many Oracle products. If you are going to program Oracle tools and products, it is essential that you have a grasp on PL SQL. A program that is written in PL SQL has a predefined structure. Here is an example of a task to be accomplished. Let's say you want to add two numbers and display the result on the screen. The task can be broken down into a series of steps that I have mentioned on the slide. We begin with identifying the first number. This is then followed by identifying the second number. You then identify how you want to store the result of the addition so you create a store or a container for the result. This is identified by a name result. We then add the two numbers by performing the addition operation. The result of the addition is then put into result. Finally, you can display what is contained in result which would be the value generated by the addition of the two numbers. To give you a visual representation, three containers have been displayed. The first container is given the name N1 and it stores the value 4. The second container is called N2 and it stores the value 5. The third container is called Result and it stores the addition of 4 and 5, which is 9. What I have tried to explain is that the task of adding two numbers would require you to identify a so-called container to store the values and then work with the values to accomplish the given task. To perform the addition of the two numbers, uh, from the previous slide I had mentioned that it would be necessary to identify the first number and create a container for it which I called as N1. If you had to do the same when writing a program, you will have to hold the value by referencing a location in memory and giving the memory location a name. These types of memory locations that can be referenced with user-defined names that would hold values generated by a program are called as variables in a program. As a programmer, it would be necessary for you to create the variables in your program and write the statements to manipulate the values in the variables as needed. Here is the PL SQL program that would accomplish the task of adding two numbers and displaying the result on the screen. My intention to, is to provide you with a general understanding of what a program is and uh, to show you what a typical PL SQL program would look like. It might be that as I read the program out to you, you will understand the logic behind it as the statements are very self-explanatory. The program begins with the word declare. It is under the declare that you identify any variables that you need in the program. The program declares three variables. As we are adding uh, two numbers and storing the result in a third variable, three variables called n1, n2 and result are declared. The data type for each variable has also been identified as number type. So under the declaration section, I have n1 number semicolon, n2 number semicolon, result number semicolon. This is then followed by the keyword begin. The word begin starts the body of the program where the statements that are needed to be executed to accomplish the given task are written. The first statement n1 colon equal to 4 assigns the value 4 to n1. The next statement assigns the value 5 to n2. 
This is then followed by the arithmetic of the two numbers being done. The arithmetic is done by, by saying result is equal to n1 plus n2. The values of n1 and n2 were added and stored in the variable called result. Then we displayed the value of the variable result by using a D DBMS output line statement. Finally, the program ends with the keyword end. Here the program that I have just discussed has been displayed with two sections. The first section is everything between the words declare and begin. This section is called the declaration section of the program and this section is an optional section. It is optional because not all programs have variables to declare. The second section is called as the body of the program and it consists of the statements between the words begin and end. Every program must have a body to it and it is a mandatory section. More on what is mandatory and optional will be discussed on the next slide. Here is the structure of a typical PL SQL program. A program can have up to three distinct parts, two of which are optional and one of them is mandatory. The first section which is optional is called the declaration section. It is the section where you identify your variables, give the variables names, data types and initial values if you want to. The second section is called the body of the program. It is a mandatory section where you write the code of the program. You use the available PL SQL programming constructs or SQL statements to write the statements of the program. The third section is called the exception section. This exception section is an optional section. That means you don't have to write an exception section. However, it serves a very important task of error handling. If you are aware of certain types of errors occurring in your program, you might want to include the exception section to ensure completeness and proper execution of the program. On this slide, you're looking at three different examples. These programs are not attempting to teach you how to write PL SQL statements, but to show you examples of the optional and mandatory sections of a PL SQL program. In the first example, the program has only a body. The program will display the word hello on the screen. The second program is an example of a program that has a declaration section and a body. In the example, you're declaring a variable called name that can hold character data in it. The value SID is stored in the, val in, in the variable name. In the body of the program, you are displaying the contents of the variable name. The value SID will be displayed on the screen. The third example has a declaration section, a body and an exception section. The declaration section is declaring two variables called n1 and n2. n1 holds the value 5, n2 holds the value 0. In the body of the program, you are attempting to display the result of dividing the contents of n1 by n2. However, a division by 0 is not allowed in Oracle. That statement which does the division will display an Oracle error. In order for a graceful exit of the program to occur, the exception section has been written. The exception section has an error handler for the zero divide type of error. The error handler displays a message on the screen indicating that division by zero is not allowed. In this tutorial, I introduced you to PL SQL. I introduced you to variables and the role that they play in holding values for a program. I showed you the typical PL SQL program structure including the optional and mandatory sections. I hope you find this tutorial useful. For more videos, tutorials and articles, you can look at the oraclecoach.com website. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening.